The network shown here takes the values represented in population B and population A, projects those to population C, and computes their sum. The decoded value of the activity in C is shown in this value graph. When I hit play, we can see that the value in C is equal to 0, which it should be if it is in fact summing the values in A and B, both of which are 0. As I slowly increase B, we can see that C increases as well. If I increase A, C increases further. When I decrease A, approximately equal to negative B, we will see that we get back to around 0. This might make us suspect that this network is indeed computing the sum function. If this were the case, when we move population input A to 1, and population B to 1 as well, we would expect C to be equal to 2. However, you will notice that it gets just above a value of 1. In addition, the neurons are spiking very vigorously. This is because these neurons have saturated. When we constructed this network in Nengo, we set the radius of all three populations to be equal to 1. However, if we were being more careful, we would have set the radius of population C to be equal to 2, since the maximum range of values that it might want to represent would go from plus 2 to minus 2, given the range of inputs we expect. This is a good reminder that when we are constructing networks using neurons, we must take into account their implementational properties, and be careful to specify the range over which the functions we want to compute are going to be defined.